I went to court for some of my clients in uh, Moscow, Russia. It was very interesting. The other lawyer lied a lot and he made up fake statements, which if it happened in America, he would be thrown out of court and he would lose his law license. But I guess it's just normal in Russia. Um, I understand that I'm going to talk a little bit about transportation. And uh, excuse me because I can't hear you guys' reaction. Um, how much time do we have, Vlad? Ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes. All right. Um, would you like me to share my screen about what I'm going to talk about? Okay, yes, okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to put if. Okay, I had questions. I had questions for everybody else, but I guess it's not going to work out. Okay, we'll just we'll continue, okay? What I'm going to talk about is a very interesting subject. It's um it's about drugs and it's about transportation of yes, flat <laughs> is going like this. The transportation of drugs across um across the Mexico um, United States border yes um, let me share my screen one moment please okay can you see my screen okay great one moment here. Okay, I'm going to talk about the border drug smuggling industry, what's called a blind mule. I was going to ask you about what a mule is, and a mule is a horse that um, and a donkey together, and that creates a mule. And in drug trafficking, a mule smuggles drugs. Um, they take drugs from Mexico and they bring them to America. Uh, one moment here. Get a little larger. Okay, Americans love to use drugs, and most drugs come from Central and South America. Um, I was going to ask you about Russian drugs. Um, every couple of hours, someone is arrested with around 5 to 75 kilos of drugs. These drugs are usually found in a hidden compartment built into the car. Around 95% of all American cases never go to trial. This includes drug cases and also um, civil and criminal cases. There are so many drug border cases that the American courts allow for fast track, fast track if the defendant will plead that they are guilty. But in these drug cases, there are still around 20 to 30 cases in California that actually go to trial. In almost all of these cases that go to trial, the defendant argues that they were blind mules, that a drug trafficking organization somehow snuck the load of drugs into the defendant's car and planned to take out the drugs once they were across the American border. So the defendant had no idea that there were any drugs. So it was a blind mule, uh, a mule that couldn't see because the drugs were hidden in their car. The other common defense is duress. Duress is a common word in law. Duress means that somebody did something um, under, it was blackmail. The person was not able to, um, the person was threatened by one of the drug dealers. Um, in this case, the defendant claims drug traffickers threatened to harm the driver or their families if they didn't take the drugs across the border. Um, to be found guilty, the American government must prove knowledge that the defendant knew there were drugs in their car.
Depending on the hidden container in the car, the government attorney can argue that it would be very difficult to get the drugs out of the car without the defendant's knowledge, or that the car could be very difficult to drive without the defendant knowing the drugs were in his car. There are some examples of the American government attorney easily proving that the defendant knew there were drugs in their car. Here are three examples. Number one, the defendant was driving an SUV. An SUV is like a van. The original battery had been removed and replaced, replaced with a large battery meant for large trucks. Inside this case was a small motorcycle battery connected to the engine and several bricks of cocaine. A car expert testified that the vehicle had to be jump-started every time it was driven. In other words, they had to have wires on the, the car battery to start the car. Because the small motorcycle battery was not strong enough to start the SUV, so clearly the person had to know that there were drugs in the car because they had to jump-start the battery every time. Um, in a second case, the defendant was driving a car with bricks of drugs stuffed into the front tires. It was a very bumpy ride once the car went faster than 20 kilometers an hour. The agent drove the car and testified about how the car felt and how bad it was to drive this car full of drugs. In the third example, the defendant was driving a car with bricks of drugs loaded into the gas tank. The tank was so full of drugs that it would only hold two gallons of gas, which an innocent person would notice. Let me jump past it here really quick. Okay. So one organization, they analyzed 5,000 cases from 2007 through 2010 of border drug busts. The complaints in these cases give all the details of each smuggling case. The time, place, what kind of drug, how much of the drug, how it was smuggled, the citizenship of the driver, and whether the dr driver confessed. And I was going to ask the question, guess how many of these cases did the defendant win? Only 1% of cases is there dismissal or acquittal. And what is acquittal? Acquittal means that they go to court and that the court finds that the person is innocent. And this only happens in 1% of the cases. Um, so one driver, most drivers, about 65% are pretty stupid. They confess immediately. Um, one of the questions the agent asks is the amount the driver was paid or would have been paid. About 85% of the defendants um, tell how much they have been paid. Um, so the study that they did, about 5,000 cases, um, they ask, how are mules paid more for carrying loans with higher expected jail time risks? So in other words, if you are carrying marijuana over the border, um, then you will get less time in jail. But if you are carrying cocaine or heroin, you get more time in jail. Um, and so this this paper asks, this study asks all of these questions because 75% of the people knew, 65% um, of the people actually admitted the dr that drug use. And so they can get all these statistics from it. Um, the study answered these questions and found that the drug mules are paid more for bigger loads. The drug mules know they're, what they're carrying. Um, so drug mules with more jail time are more likely to know what drugs they're carrying when they're arrested. Um, the more risky the drugs, the more drug mules are paid. Okay. And so before this time, um, just recently, um, the, the drug enforcement agencies thought most of these cases were false. Um, but recently they have found, since 2011, um, they have found that a lot of these blind mule cases where there's actually 
attorneys who or there's I'm sorry there's actually drug there's blind drug mules that they actually tr carry these drugs across the border without actually knowing it these cases are actually true and it happens quite often um, let me show you a picture of one um, for example drugs were smuggled in the spare tire of a car once the on the other side of the border the tires were quickly switched out by drug smugglers when the owner had parked the car car operate cartel operators drug operation operators unlocked the car trunks often when the owners were asleep and loaded them with sacks of marijuana which they placed to remove once the car was parked let me show you a picture here this is one picture of a blind drug drug mule one moment and here's a picture and this is the drugs in the spare tire of the car and there are other cases um, including um, including people um, responding to fake employment jobs um, in the newspaper and then what happens is they go and they take the job and while they're out of the car people will put drugs in their car um, also very common is that drugs would attach magnets to packages of drugs and then stick them on the undercarriages on the, the bottom of the cars of unsuspecting drivers um, so the smuggling investigators the government have actually put articles in newspapers in which these drug smugglers advertise and the the advertisement says warning drug traffickers are advertising jobs for drivers to cross to the united states don't be a victim of the smugglers traps um, and then these government agencies they'll pay up to 30 uh, they they will pay up to two thousand dollars for putting the um, the advertisement in the spanish papers so vlad it's kind of strange because i don't hear anybody um, but that was what I was going to talk about was drug smuggling, which I think is a very interesting transportation question. Um, did you want to ask questions or what I can do, Brad, is I'm going to send you this paper. And so if anybody wants to read about this and some of the words, and if they have any questions, let me give my email address. One moment here. Okay. I'm sending it. Okay. <laughs> Francis. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Questions? Uh, Any questions? Have, yeah, I have now switched on the volume and the sound. Yeah, it's okay. You you can hear us. Yes. Yeah? So yes. Uh, there will be one two questions. Uh, so they are asking our students asking, and then I again switch switch off. Yes. The sound and <laughs> you continue speaking and answering for one two minutes. So just one two three four minutes mm -hmm. of. Of interaction, the real interaction. So your sure. story about smuggling was great. Yeah, it's in interesting, I suppose. Yeah, but maybe our students will ask some questions not connected with smuggling. Any any questions you like? So I ask them to um, to prepare some questions connected with the stereotype stereotypes yeah so that russians have about americans and americans have about russians yeah so in order that the true american citizen could explain and 
unveil, unveil the stereotypes. You can. Okay, so then let me go. You have uh, told uh, uh, a lot of what is your attitude about this uh, information uh, about this statistic? So, do you understand me? All right. <laughs> Any real people, <laughs> smugglers, <laughs> cases, or have you got only from the internet those? those just a second, just a second, just a second, mm, just a second. So I, I'm switching off. Okay, so now here it goes. I can still hear you. Really? Yes. Okay, so can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, it depends on which statistic. Which statistic? Я вот, вот я не понимаю этого вопроса. Вчера, Скажи, даже по-русски. Даже по-русски. Ну как сказать? Он привел статьи, как вам точка для статистики? Да Хорошо. Не ну, вы как параллельно. Ну, понимаете, вы задаете вопрос. Я я не Давайте, какой-нибудь вопрос реальный, реальный. Ребят, это же его ну, Знаете, какой-нибудь нормальный вопрос. Let, let, let me try. I'll, I'll answer. Um, I had... <coughs> Travis? Yes. Can you hear me? That's okay. So that's not the question here. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me answer. We don't understand it here. The guy has now asked the, what is your attitude towards your statistics here? I, I, I'm telling him that we don't understand the question here. You should be more uh, okay. sensible with the questions. Let me um let me answer some of the statistics. Yeah. Um, the big statistic that I had is that in ninety four percent of all ca state cases, there is um they never go to trial. That means that somebody pleads out, which means that they say they're guilty. That happens in ninety four percent of all state cases. In what, what, what happens? Sorry, in ninety percent of all. They, it's called they plead out. Plead out. What does it mean? That means that they, um, they get a deal with the, uh, pl the, the plaintiff, the prosecutor. Okay. And they never go to court. Uh -huh. Okay. In America. Then ninety-four percent. Hmm? No, no. Um, let's say, for example, Vlad, um, let's say, for example, that you took drugs into America mm -hmm. and you were caught. Okay? okay. Uh, marijuana. <laughs> Just a little bit. Marijuana. <laughs> okay. Christmas gift. Yes. Now, if you were caught driving with the marijuana, it would be a state case. Staircase. No, state. 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 Oh, yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. And 
So if you're driving, it would be a state case. And so in 94% of the cases, mm -hmm. you would say, I don't want to go to court. I will just plead, which means I will say I'm guilty. Mm -hmm. And then they will give you a sentence and you will, okay. 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 And then the other statistic is in 97% of federal cases, they, um, they plead out, which means they say they're guilty and then they work with the prosecutor to have a case. Mm -hmm. And that's true in both civil and in federal cases and state cases over 90% of all cases never go to trial. Yes. And one more, what, hey, Vlad? One more question, one more question you, had, you had, it was kind of a joke, was if I had family or friends that had ever had any drug smuggling cases, um, my brother, my younger brother, he's two years younger than me, he actually went to jail for two years to federal prison for two years because he had a methamphetamines lab. So methamphetamines. So he was caught and then he went to jail for two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that okay now with him? Yeah, he's very successful now. Has he given up? No, he, he, uh, he went to jail and he decided to change his life. So he's okay now. So that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. He changed, yeah? yeah, he changed. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Okay, thank you, Fred. I have three brothers. I have three brothers who are criminals. Okay. Yes. Okay, Travis, thank you very much. So your time is precious. Yeah. Huh? One question. So Let's have a question from a, a girl, a woman, yes. Thank you. Question and we will round up. Okay. Uh, Travis, I would like to ask you about uh, what do you think about legalization of drugs in some American states? Um, do you support this idea or are you against it? Thank you. Thank you. Um, most people in America don't support the legalization of drugs. Um, marijuana is actually still illegal on the federal basis, um, but it's not illegal in about five different states, um, marijuana, and about in how many states is it about legal? five. In five states it's legal, yeah? Yes, and I tried to go to Nevada before. So which one? Which, which, which one? one? Which um, I think Maine, which is right above New York. Uh, Washington, California, Oregon, Oregon and, and Nevada. Nevada. Okay. Yes, and I'm the state of Utah is right next to um, Nevada, and I wanted to go to Nevada to get legal drugs. Oh, and I'm sorry, not not um, Col not Oregon, but Colorado. Okay. So, what is your personal attitude to the legalization? I used to think it was very bad, but there, no, 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 I used to think I before, um, but I started reading articles from the English magazine The Economist, which is very libertarian, and since then I think it should be legal. I think that like prostitution should be legal, um, a drug should be legal. Um, every anything that a person does that doesn't hurt somebody else should be legal. So me personally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it was an honor and pleasure to listen to to view you to listen to you and uh, to get this presentation. So it's 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 a pity that we have some problems with the connection, but still that's that's great. So, please have a nice day. Yes, I'm going back to sleep. We will continue, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.